Good afternoon, and welcome to Seniors Count. I'm your host, Greg Jocelyn. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built, so our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. So thank you for joining us today. Today, my guests are Lizbeth Castrillian and Lewis Kaplan, joining me from Action from Boston Community Development, which is ABCD. It's one of the largest nonprofits here in Boston, and they're here to talk about a dynamic new program called Food Dollars. It's an educational class that combines information on healthy eating with, with more background on how to reduce expenses and stretch money for food. So thank you both for coming to joining us and joining us today. Uh, well, thanks oh, for having thank you us. so We're much. Yes, for inviting us. So the first, I wanted to start with talking more about this idea of food insecurity in finance. So I, w I was hoping if you could just define for me uh, what that means for you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, uh, food insecurity occurs when there is a lack of. Well, there's a lack of, of means to right. eat healthy and to right. have access to, to healthy foods, and it's sure. a big issue in this country. Um, I think it's almost five million seniors uh, experience uh, food insecurity and go to bed hungry every night, and that accounts for about eight percent of the uh, senior population. So that's like one in every twelve seniors has food insecurity. And food insecurity is not as critical an issue in Boston as it is in other parts of the country, but it's still of, of great concern. And so the whole idea behind this program is to address those issues of food insecurity and try and come up with some means to help mitigate that for Boston uh, low-income seniors. Yeah, and I think it, this is what makes the program that you have really interesting because it, that's not a fact that is well known. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, people are. How many people did you say are going to bed? Hungry? Well, it's millions of the yeah. general population, right, but right. seniors uh, nationally, it's almost uh, five million. Right. So it's not something that you you really hear in the news a lot. So no. And the, and the numbers in Boston actually reflect national scale as far as percentages right. of the population. Right. And so um, so in terms of in terms of finance as well. Well, in terms of finance, so yeah. these people uh, are forced to make decisions of. Do I pay the rent this month or sure. do I have that extra meal? Do I pay the heating bill or do I buy that chicken? Um, and the problem is not having enough dollars to make the, uh, make the budget work for the month for, for food. So we're teaching people how to stretch their food dollars and, and how, to, um, how to save money, how to get more money to spend on food and how to save it from other areas of their life. Right, so you're making a really good point. So talking about the other expenses that we have in our mm -hmm. lives. <laughs> yes. Um, so and how those expenses can sometimes take precedence over sure. something as fundamental mm -hmm. as food. So thinking about food insecurity and finance is related to balance, that sure. it sounds like yes. what, you're, yeah. what you're saying. Um, and how do you, in terms of just diet, diets and you know, eating in our routines in our daily life. I mean, how, what kinds of things should we avoid in our... In our yes, so while we, during our classes, we don't really talk about being on diets. Right. Yeah, we so, focus more yeah. on healthy food and how mm -hmm. to access healthy food. So our participants learn about food resources, such as food pantries, community gardens, congregate meal sites, and we also assist our participants with SNAP applications. Mm -hmm. So, and we tell our participants that they can basically eat everything, but in moderation. Of course, we talk about uh, portion control, right. about reducing the intake of sodium and sugars, and also we give our participants some healthy cooking strategies that they can use at home. Uh, but basically the program is more about eating healthier on a budget and also about enjoying food. Right, so I mean that makes it different. I mean, we, you think about we're overwhelmed by you know, diets, mm -hmm. by you know, healthy eating, um, you know, plants that promise a certain, mm -hmm. you know, sort of you lose a certain amount of pounds. I have after. a bookshelf <laughs> yeah. at home full of those. <laughs> right. So it sounds like I mean we're such you know we're infiltrated with that. So mm -hmm. I guess uh, my question is how is this particular program, so food dollars, addressing both the things that we're discussing? So food insecurity, finance, and reshaping your life and your relationship to food without these kind of um, easy fix 
diets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there isn't a real easy fix, uh, sure. you know, for any of us with any uh, any situation. <laughs> Um, but we incorporate a lot of things into what goes into a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So additionally, we talk about exercise, about um, making that part of your daily life, whether it's walking for 10 or 15 minutes a day. Um, so it, it covers a whole sort of range of, of uh, topics. It's, it's um, eating healthy foods versus unhealthy foods. It's how to prepare foods healthy. Mm -hmm. It's how to save dollars at the supermarket. We, we teach them shopping skills. Uh, one thing that uh, we talk about is uh, strategies at the supermarket about shopping the aisles. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, we have a whole session about healthy cooking and healthy shopping skills. So uh, basically we tell our participants that just by going around the supermarket we all can find the healthy food we need. Mm -hmm. Like fruits and veggies, and dairy, seafood, chicken, right. meat, and bakery. Um, my, in the aisles, we can also find items that we all need, like rice, oil, uh, salt, sugar, but just by avoiding the aisles, we can find all the basic uh, foods that we all need for a healthy diet. Great, great. Because if you go in the, the interior aisles of supermarkets is where you have all the processed food, all the refined food, and we also tell them about how the food is displayed. Eye level is the most expensive food. If you look down the, toward the bottom or you look up on top, that's where you're going to find the bargains. And that's, <laughs> that's fascinating. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's a psychology in itself. Yeah, yeah well, the, the, uh, the food processors buy shelf space from the supermarkets. I mean, it's a very important part of, the, very important part of their marketing. And um, so, you know, the, the supermarkets are there to sell their product, and, and we want our people to buy their product, but to buy it smartly. So we say, for example, buy the store brand, which a lot of times is made in the same or processed in the same factory as the brand name, but it costs you a lot less. Or buying in bulk, you save money by buying in bulk as opposed to buying a smaller. Because so if you live alone, perhaps you can share it with a neighbor if you buy a sack of rice or if you buy dried beans or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, just little little tips like that. Yeah, I mean, but that that's really addressing that idea of how you're managing your money and how you're eating you know, sure. healthy in a, in a different way than mm -hmm. I, most programs mm -hmm. I've heard about haven't yeah. really yeah. addressed. And, and like we said, yeah. it's, not diet, it's not a weight loss program. It's program. not a weight loss yeah. program. However, if you do eat healthier and you do incorporate some exercise, you will lose weight. It just is a, it's a byproduct of, of that right. lifestyle. Yeah, and the good thing about Food Dollars is that the program combines healthy eating information with um, how to cut back on other expenses like transportation, utilities, cable, cell phone. So in that way, our participants can have extra dollars to spend on healthy food. Mm -hmm. So we also teach them about uh, senior benefits okay. and we help them apply for it so they can always have more money to spend on food. That's great. And what is what I mean? What is the class structure like? And you know, what, if I were to take the mm -hmm. class, if I was a senior, what would what would it be like? Yeah, um, we usually have from ten to twelve participants in our class, and we meet for an hour and a half class once a week. Um, we provide healthy snacks. The program is totally free, and at the end of each class, we have an activity that I really like. is the goal setting activity. Mm -hmm. So each participant uh, basically gets to choose a goal to work on during the week. For example, it can be a healthy eating goal, uh, it can be a saving money goal, right? And it's really good because uh, there is a lot of peer-to-peer -peer interaction during the classes. So by, by next week or by next class, all the participants get to share with the whole group whether or not they were able to achieve their goals. And it's just great to see how they support each other. And it's fine to say, I couldn't accomplish my goal, but then other participants can tell you, oh, I have some ideas for you, why you don't try to have a bottle of water with you the whole day. And that way you can remind yourself that you need to drink water. So it, it's very nice. Great. Yeah. Let's take a quick moment to, um, you have a video clip for us. Yes. Um, and it's from the um, Elder Hunger the Forum. The Elder Hunger Forum that took place in January at the Boston Public Library. Right. So I think this is a great example yes. of um, describing the program and then also giving us the bigger picture. So let's um, take a moment and um, take a look at that video. Mm -hmm. Elderly people who struggle to keep pace with the cost of food are getting some help. 
thanks to the Food Dollars program offered by ABCD, low-income people aged 50 and older have been more secure about having enough to eat, and they're eating food that's more healthy. The program also helps with financial literacy and access to benefits. A report on the program was discussed this morning in the Copley Square Library. My life has changed 100%. I've learned how to stretch my dollars. I've learned how to shop properly, read labels, and save money. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't exercising right. And uh, it really ch turned my life around. Now I, I know the portion to eat, and I know how much exercise I need. And a lot of things I was eating I should have been eating. And I just cut all loose from it, and I feel much better now. Elders often do not have the resources uh, to buy the food that is not only uh, that they can afford to have, but also is nutritious. And, at, and in this program, what we try to do is help them understand how to shop, what to buy, how to eat nutrition as nutritionally as possible on a, on a small amount of dollars and assist them in finding ways to, to stretch their dollars and assist them in, in uh, eating healthy and also uh, having enough food to eat from one week to the next. Seniors have a very hard time today making ends meet. Um, we live in a state and in a city where the people don't have enough income and the costs of housing are so high and the costs of fuel are so high that they're needing to scrimp and save just to make a healthy food choice. And Food Dollars helps them make a healthier food choice on a very tight budget. Elder hunger is really a hidden problem, but you can understand the root cause of it when you look at the fact that 40% of people over 60 in the city are living on less than $20,000 a year. There are a lot of elders who are experiencing what we call food insecurity. This is a term that's been defined by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and it's really about people who are worried every single month that they will not have enough money to get them through the month to buy the food they need. What we have found and heard through a lot of our local on the ground partners is that the older adults that they work with um, have always helped people their entire lives and so when they find themselves in a position of needing help they have a very hard time asking for it. Um, public benefits have a stigma attached to them. People don't understand that uh, in taking a, a, a public benefits program like SNAP, they're not taking away money or food from other people who need it more. They're entitled to that. They've paid into the system. If they need it, they have every right to go ask for help. Most elders are too proud to ask. And so because they're too proud to ask, some of them go unfed. And having, having the ability to go into a home, to bring food into an elder's home, is really what we want to be able to do. Because that's really the only way we're going we're gonna to solve the problem. Because isolation kills. And a lot of elders are, in fact, isolated. Thank you so much for bringing that video, because I think it's, it gives a really good example of the full context. A good overview. Yeah, mm -hmm. it yeah. does. And I think that you can see with the number of individuals um, you know, who were interviewed, there's, this isn't something just with ABCD, it's a wider, oh, sure. it's a wider network yeah. of people who are you know, focused on helping seniors address you know, this. Yeah, so, we, all, we all work as partners. Yeah, um, that's right. And one of the things we work as partners um, with is helping our participants <laughs> apply for SNAP benefits um, sure. because we really kind of do take them by the hand and go through the whole, it's a very simple application process, but I think people are put off by it uh, just by the, as they mentioned in the video, just this, you know, do, am I deserving of this and am I taking away from someone else, which by the way, you're not, uh, there's enough for everybody. In fact, people don't take enough advantage of the SNAP program. And one of the things we've been doing with people who currently receive SNAP or food stamps, mm -hmm is maximizing their medical deductions because it sure. just increases so much more the benefits they get every month from SNAP. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and um, I also wanted to, another part of the program that I wanted to mention is that you're currently recruiting volunteers um, yes. to teach these classes. So, um, do you want to speak to that? Yes, of course. Uh, so, for the first two years, the program was offered just in four neighborhoods. But uh, this year, thanks to the generosity of the AARP Foundation, the Food Dollars Program will be offered in all Boston neighborhoods. So mm -hmm. we are looking for volunteers who want to teach the Food Dollars classes in the different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So people who want to lead the classes will gain a deeper understanding of healthy eating 
And at the same time, we'll experience the joy of helping the community. So if you really want to know more about this great opportunity with ABCD, please feel free to contact me and I will have more information for you. The training for volunteers is coming soon and it's totally free. That's great because I think, it, you know, even volunteers will have the opportunity, even though they're teaching the classes, they'll have the opportunity to learn what's mm -hmm. in the curriculum anyway. So yeah. it, it's a great way to kind of be in it together with the class participants as well. So learning. And, and we about, learn from the classes too. Sure. I mean, it's not just the, it's a two-way street. I mean, there's a lot of information. People may be disadvantaged in, disadvantaged in, in access to food, right. but that doesn't make them any less interested or any less... Um, you know, aware of the issues, and they do a lot of research on their own, and we're always fed questions about, well, what about this? I read about that. I read about the other, That's and right. uh, and they also bring new opportunities to us about uh, food resources that we weren't aware of. So um, it's kind of like a partnership. Right. Yeah. That's great. And it is you have, great. So do, when you take the class, you have this great manual, uh, which is the Food Dollars Program yeah. manual. So, um, and what we've thought that um, we could do today is have you, you know, show me a couple of the exercises just for people who are interested in taking the class or teaching the class sure. can get an idea of what that looks like. So yes. we're going to start with um, page 20 and you can lead me yes. in this fiber foods activity. So yes, I'm going to um, turn it over <laughs> turn it over to my teacher. That's fine. So we have a session about the importance of eating more whole grains and foods high in fiber. Mm -hmm. So and we have an activity it's called the fiber foods activity and it's just okay. a short quiz. Okay. So um, I will give you the food and you will have to tell okay. me whether or not the food is high or low in fiber. Okay. So what about with bread? So wheat bread, I would say high in fiber. Mm, that's low in fiber. Ah, okay. So <laughs> the reason is, uh, in some cases, we think that all brown bread is whole wheat bread, right. and that's not the case. Right. So we always need to look for the word whole, or we need to read the label, and the first ingredient should be whole wheat floured. Aha, uh -huh. whole, not just wheat. Not just right. wheat. If it says wheat, because one of bread is wheat flour. It, right. <laughs> That's right. Bread. Not high in fiber. No, no and high I, in fiber. As I mentioned earlier, I mean, all those years I was eating pumpernickel and dark rye thinking it's so healthy right. until one day I looked at the ingredients and the brown is from food dye. It's, it's not, it's enriched uh, flour. It's, it's white flour that's made to look brown. Yeah, and it, it's so, it's difficult as, you know, the consumer, you really need to be aware of those little things, sure. like even like nine ninety nine, when something's, you know, that's really $10, but still, it's yeah, the, right, in, right. in our brains, we, we think that we're getting... We, yeah. Yeah. we talk after. about um, whole wheat, whole wheat, whole wheat, whole grains so much during the six-week course of classes that I think that... You know, people have this, they're dreaming about whole wheat. So now they, <laughs> they respond, we ask them, what kind of bread should you be eating? Whole wheat. Whole, whole wheat. wheat. Yeah. And yeah. they always look for the word whole or whole wheat flour yeah. as the first ingredient right. in right. the label. Cool. So it's very good. Yeah. Uh, what about pinto beans? Pinto beans, I would say high in fiber. Great. Yeah. That's the, the answer. And now whole wheat bread. Whole wheat bread, yes. High in high fiber. In fiber. Yeah. Now the, and we just talk about it, yeah. about looking for the word whole. Um, corn flakes. Cornflakes, mm, I'm going to say no. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Those are low in fiber. Low in fiber. Um, what about whole wheat Cheerios? Uh, I'm going to say no. Usually the whole wheat Cheerios, just the plain Cheerios, are very high in fiber. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking. Like, that's you didn't fine. take the class. It was a trick. Right? Yes, I know. You are doing really good. Uh, white rice. White rice, low. Low in fiber, yeah. yes. Uh, what about the potato with the skin? High in fiber. High because yeah. of the skin, right? Because of the skin. Yeah. Yeah. A whole barley. Whole barley? Mm -mm. I'm not sure. Unprocessed barley. Uh, unprocessed barley? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say yes. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> unprocessed is a clue. It's okay. a clue, uh huh. And brown rice? Brown rice, I would say high in fiber. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Great. So that gives a, a really good example of, of what you do. And then there's also one about the unit prices. That, yes. Um, um, this, is so this is on page 30. 30. You want to read that? <laughs> no. So we talk about unit pricing. Okay. Um, 
And unit pricing is the price in the little orange sticker on the shelf in the uh, supermarket that tells you how much it is per unit. So that could be per ounce, per pound, per gallon. Sure. Um, as opposed to the regular retail price, which in this example is 439 versus 649. The, the point of this exercise is you would think that, oh, 439, that must be the, the best buy because this is 649. But if you look at the unit price, the unit price on the 649 is 12.98 a gallon, and the unit price on this other, on the Wesson, is 23.42. Um, so it's yeah. twice as much money. So we really want people to get in the habit of looking at the unit price, the orange yep. uh, label, the orange label on the shelf. And that's usually the price that we just ignore. We're like, oh, yeah. that's some <laughs> other code right. or that's like right. something exactly. the supermarket is keeping track of. But th that's fascinating to to compare the two because. You know, if you're you're you know getting kind of ripped off essentially, right, or yeah. if you're getting a good. Because right off the top, a lot of people would say, "Oh, that's a no-brainer, four thirty-nine." Well, it's not. And you know, the other thing that I discovered is usually larger quantities are cheaper, but not always. I've found products mm -hmm. in the stores where, you know, let's say a five-pound bag was ten dollars, but you could buy two five-pound bags for four dollars each. So right, right. you just have to be a smart shopper. Great. Yes. That's, so, <laughs> and I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more. Yes, we, we have yeah, more activities you can, and you can things. do in this. Yeah. Um, so before we close, I mean, is there anything you want to add to you know encourage people to either volunteer or to take the class? Yes. Um, so I really want to invite um, people either to enroll in the classes or to become volunteers of the program because, as I said before, we have been running the program for two years and a half, and it's just such a great program. Uh, you help others, and at the same time, you learn a lot from them. Uh, our participants get, get to enjoy the classes a lot at the point that they share their concerns about uh, money and food without being ashamed. Sure. So, and that's also very, very important. And if you want to become a volunteer, I think it's a great opportunity. If you really like healthy eating, especially healthy eating on a budget, how to save money to spend on healthy food, this is also a great opportunity right. to help yourself and the community as well. Right. Yeah, and I also want to mention that we give classes in both English and in Spanish, so That's we've fun. taught a lot of people in the um, you know, Latin American uh, neighborhoods, and mm -hmm. we're looking for future participants who are Spanish-speaking and future volunteers who are Spanish-speaking. It's a wonderful opportunity. So thank you both for yeah. coming. Thank you so and much. I encourage our, our viewers to get in contact with you both. Please. Um, to find out more about this. Great yeah, program. that would be great. great. So thank you. And I thank appreciate you. Um, you for watching us today. Um, remember, this show is brought to you by the mayor of Boston, Martin J. Walsh, and our commissioner, Emily Shea. And you can always contact, contact us at the Elderly Commission. We can connect you to great organizations like ABCD. Um, you can call us at 617-635-4366. And the mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can also email us at elderly at boston.gov. And you can find us on Facebook. So take care and have a beautiful day. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. Bright blessed days, dark sacred nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think to myself.